Welcome to Call the Compiler from the Command Line. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I've gotten a lot of questions on how do you do that build thing you're doing? Uh, what are you running? Uh, how does that work? And um, I thought we would start on that whole topic because it's that's more than one video. Uh, just to talk about the compiler um, and uh, how to actually use the compiler. So um, let's actually start with Visual Studio Code. Here is uh, a random app. I chose the uh, the Tic Tac Toe app that we did on the channel a while ago. If you haven't seen that, go check out the Tic Tac Toe video. It's quite fun. Uh, a Tic Tac Toe game running in AL uh, using standard UI um, and subscribe at the same time, perhaps. Anyway, uh, so when we're in Visual Studio Code, we have installed the AL language as an extension. It's perfect. Um, so when we have that, we can go and press Control Shift B. And we have output and it says AL compiler version 7.1, blah, blah, blah. Compilation started for project tic-tac-toe containing five files at a time and compilation ended a bit later. Uh, success. But that's not really a command line. So, so where, I think the first question we need to ask, where is the compiler? And, um, for that, I will now venture out into the command prompt because you, you guys know me, I'm an old timer and I do love the command line. Uh, I even have a business end for a command line product if you're interested. Anyway, um, if I go into users and then I go into Eric and in Eric, I go into the folder called .vs code. We'll see that this is almost just empty, but there is a folder called extensions. And in here we get a folder for each extension that's installed in our Visual Studio Code. And one of them is ms-dynamics-smb.al7 blah, blah, blah. So let's take a look inside that. And lots of stuff goes on in here. There's a bin folder. There's some file icons, icons, there's an image folder, there's some note modules out, uh, package, JSON, readme, and snippets, and syntax, and uh, lots of stuff here in here. But, but what we're interested in is actually the bin folder. So let's go into the bin folder. Inside the bin folder, we can see that there's a bunch of files. Uh, most of them are DLL files. Some of them even with the with the debug symbols. It's very nice of Microsoft to do that. Um, but there's also a couple of executables. So actually, just clear that and look at the executable. Wow. Uh, so there's the al table uh, proxy generator .exe, the, the tool for doing CRM tables integration. That's a video on that one also actually. Um, but the one we're interested in is the alc.exe. So there's a, a long command line tradition that a, you know, the, the name of the C compiler is CC. I don't think I have one installed here. Uh, and, and, and so on. Um, so ALC, that's our compiler. If I run it here, we can see that we're actually getting, you can see the first two lines, the copyright message here is the exact same thing as the copyright message we're getting here. Um, but now we are getting an error. A project without a manifest must have the out option specified. Um, and we could do that. I'm not sure that out colon test it dot app. 
something happened. So compilation started for the project compilation containing zero files. Compilation ended. So did we actually get something in this folder? No, we did not, did not get anything. But we should not run the compiler in this folder either. So one of the first thing we want to do is make sure that we can access this compiler. And, and there's different ways of going about that. You could take a copy of the bin folder and put it where you would like to have the compiler setting. Um, you could, every time you call it, you could specify the entire path for where it is. Uh, I have done something else. I have added um, the, the folder to my path so that if I'm, let's say I go to the root and I type ALC, well, the compiler is still available because it's in my path. The only problem with that is that Microsoft is frequently updating uh, their, their Visual Studio Code extension, meaning that the folder name will change. Uh, so you have to deal with that somehow. Um, in my all my build scripts thingy, I, I have a, uh, a little thing that go in and looks at the whatever folder the ALC executable is in and then uses that folder. Many ways of doing that. So I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, so now I can type ALC anywhere and this works. So if I go into projects, YouTube, tic-tac-toe, I do ALC in here. A project without a manifest must have the out option specified. We can try again. I don't think this will work anyway. So still containing zero files and we did not get a out test one file. So, so I'm, uh, that, that error, you know what? What I'm trying to prove that this, this error is strange. So what you need to do is that you need to add the path of a project. And what do you mean by the path or what do I mean by path of project? I mean, that's the folder where your app.json is located. So in this case, it's just a dot, which is pretty easy. So we can do that again. And now it says compilation started for project tic-tac-toe containing five files. That's perfect. But then we get an error saying the package cache path has not been specified. Game engine, game engine, AL uses the code unit base64 convert and somewhere else we use the code unit temp blob. Uh, so that's the references that are unsolved. Um, but we can we can we can solve that again. So let's grab this one again and then do the package cache path colon and then that will be in before I do that let's look at so we see that the folder where our packages where our symbols are located is called dot al packages that's the folder that we want to uh, uh, to specify so if I go up here again and then I do package cache path colon uh, and and when a path start with a dot, that means the current directory. So dot slash dot al packages. I usually put a slash on this. Let's see if this works. Compilation started for project tic tac toe containing five files. Now it takes and and actually you could not see what I typed. Or now you can see what I typed up here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me actually, let me move this on the other side of the screen. There you go. Perfect. So now compilation ended. Let's actually now try to add the out and then call it YouTube one app parameters. So now we have three parameters on this one. We have the root of the project, the location of the uh, the symbols, and our 
the file that we want this to be compiled into. So we compile again. <laughs> Compilation ended. Let's take a look. And now we have a YouTube One app file, um, which is what we asked for. And we can see that it has almost the same size as the uh, the one that was compiled from Visual Studio Code. Uh, it might just be the file name or something like that. That's uh, that's different. Uh, the one byte that's different anyway so with this in mind now we could you know we, we could create a uh, let's just you know, let's grab this one now that we have it so let's just put this one into our our clipboard uh, and then do notepad uh, compile dot cmd uh, and this is just notepad, that's okay. We paste this command into it. So uh, uh, as soon as we're working with something like that, it, it's it's quite a good idea to, let, let's make sure that whatever we're trying to output doesn't exist before we start, because at some point we will also would like to check if, if if this one returns an error or not, but that that's a whole other discussion. Now we just want to kind of getting something that we can take on. So at this point, we will assume that we do have a YouTube one. So we can copy YouTube one app and let's just copy it to, I can all do X copy and then slash yes. So we'll copy to dot dot meaning the, um, the parent folder. So let's try to save this guy and then do one pile compile. And compiling again, I should have selected something that were smaller. One file copied. So now in here we should have a output, an artifact or whatever we want to call it, a fancy language of, of what we're outputting. So at this point, we already have started kind of building, well, the fancy word would be a, a pipeline or a build server or a build script or whatever you call it. But we have taken the compiler out of Visual Studio and into the command line so we can use it. Um, and let's go back into tic-tac-toe. I'm able to do that. So with the compile here, so, so this, this is very, very simple and rudimentary, but, but I wanna do this to, to kind of give you the idea of that this is not really rocket science. This is this is not complicated. This is only a matter of uh, you taking the, the, the steps that you want to take and put them into a a a, uh, a structured um, file where, where everything was run the same every time you call it. Um, and everything starts with the compiler and the compiler says, I and mean, if we run ALC, we can see that there are, let me see if I can make this bigger. So we can still read it. So there, now we used three parameters. There's a bunch of parameters. So we use the project parameter to, oops, to specify the root of a, of a project where the app.json is located. We use the out command if we don't use the out command, we'll just get the normal file, which is publisher underscore name underscore version dot app. Um, we use the down here, the package cast path to specify where our symbols are located. Um, if we had dot net stuff involved, then we need to also specify our assembly probing path here. Um, and there's a bunch of other uh, flags like the feature flags, uh, 
that uh, we can override what's in app.json. Uh, we can control rule sets. We can specify how detailed a log should be. Uh, so if something is strange, you can actually ask the compiler to uh, to be more specific what happens, and then Microsoft can get that log to look at what went wrong. Um, there is read only read only errors as warnings. Um, and we have another one that warnings as errors or no warnings. And so you, you, you can specify how you built how it wants to be. And when you when you're looking at these parameters, you quickly realize that it's basically you don't we don't see what parameters Visual Studio is calling with, but it's calling with a bunch of these parameters anyway. Uh, so we have the exact same feature set as if it was compiled from in here. We have the exact same possibilities of controlling how our build should be. And that's already 16 minutes. So I think this is a great time to uh, to stop this video. Uh, next time I'm going to touch this up, I'm going to build this uh, out a bit more to have some control of the source code uh, in, 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 in our script. Uh, we're going to look at eventually also at translations, uh, but we're going to look at way of controlling version numbers and so on. Um, and uh, signing in, in case you are working with stuff that needs to go to app source, it needs to be signed also. There's a lot of steps that we can put into these, uh, these types of scripts. Um, but that's for another video. So until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.